Well, I'm a periodontist, and every time I can, I try to regenerate. And there are not many ways you can do nowadays. Endogain is one of the most predictable now. Well, I use Endogain mainly during my periodontal surgery in order to promote regeneration. Um, sometimes we use it even in flapless indication when we have deep pockets, but not too deep. So we can try to improve regeneration even without surgery. Uh, that's a very good question because nowadays, very often when we place implants, we place implants in non-ideal situations. So you are forced many times to place an implant near a periodontally compromised tooth. In this situation, you want to promote bone regeneration, but also periodontal regeneration. So many times we use Endogain along the tooth or along the teeth, which have a period problem, and we try to improve bone regeneration and period regeneration at the same time. I was one of the investigators that tried to assess the efficacy of using Endogain in flapless indication. The preliminary results are very encouraging. Now, even though we don't have a really long-term results, there are possibilities that Endogain using flapless indication may promote regeneration. So we can use it in a deep defect, but not too deep and especially in patients who have uh, a period pocket during the maintenance period. There is no chance to, there is no indication for a really surgery, but we want to promote regeneration. Um, we need to do further studies, but uh, preliminary results are encouraging. I've been using ceramic implants for a few years now. And what I have found is that the quality of the soft tissue around the ceramic implants is really fantastic. So even though we don't have long-term results, probably the attachment to the ceramic implant by the soft tissue is of better quality, of different quality. So maybe um, the perimplantitis incidence will be less. But of course, we need further long-term studies about that.